night washing clothes. Oh, was it really? Tuesday was ironing. That was the old Ozzie and Harriet type oh, thing. Well, you're, you're, you're about two years older than I am. So. <laughs> I'm only 75. 75. Oh, I tried to turn 59 this summer, so I'm trying to catch up. Oh, my you. gosh. You're a young kid yet. <laughs> you know, I feel pretty darn good, though, man. Yeah, you know, good. it's not the calendar. You have to grow old, but yeah. we don't have to grow up. No. <laughs> That's what I told you. Yeah. And I said, yeah. I'm not growing up. Heck no. Too no. much responsibility there. I never intend to. Hi, Linda. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Hi there. Fully retired now? No, I'm not retired. I'm still working. Wow. Uh, off the, off the uh, actually, I'm on the planning commission now. Oh, yeah. Good. I want to keep involved. The, um, our city manager would like me to be, continue to be involved. Good. He said, we need you. They put me on the planning commission. We always had problems on that. Last first meeting I was on, the two people that are there. It's kind of related to you being on, on that, the whole brand property. Excellent. He makes a motion. I second him, or I made the motion. Second. All of a sudden, these other people are explaining the commissioner is spinning their heads. I guess I better get up there. <laughs> well, good morning, Mark. Are you feeling better? You don't look any better. <laughs> Yay. Good morning. Let's see. I think my microphone is turned on. There we go. We got. Uh, as we, there we go, now we're getting sound. So as we came up to Sunday, um, we are so fortunate that Kevin was able to make contact and Artie has stepped in at the last minute to, to fill in as our musician for the day. So again, thank you for your help today, Artie, and helping us with everything that we're doing. Uh, welcome, you are the hearty ones in town, huh? We are a thin group. I, well, not as thin as I ought to be, but uh, we... We are a thin group. We're, we're going to celebrate nonetheless. Today is Baptism of Our Lord Sunday. Every year at this time as we gather, we have our, our time to remember baptism. So today will be a time to talk about some of the meaning uh, behind baptism. I, I can't tell you in any given year how many times people come and ask me questions about the meaning, purpose, and why we do what we do. And so each year we spend time uh, at this time. We spend it at other times as well. This year in August we had some conversation like this as well. But I hope today is helpful for you as you also respond to questions that others bring to you and as you think about and ponder your own thoughts of baptism. So today, baptism of our Lord. Um, as we gather, are there questions or are there announcements or things we need to know for the, for the group today? Things we need to hold up? Yes. We are a spare group this morning, but Wednesday is United Methodist Women's Call to Prayer and Self-Denial, 2 o'clock. Um, Jenny Cruzy will be our guest speaker. She is West Michigan Conference United Methodist Women President. I'd like to have someone come to hear her. I'm a little worried about the weather. Um, so check with your circle leader or call the church office, and if we have to cancel, we'll let them know. And there is a sub-sale coming up, United Methodist Women, and you've got next two Sundays, I think it is, to sign up. And I think that's all. Thank you. Great. Thank you much. Um, other uh, things for us to remember, there's a book table in the back this week, a new book, um, we finished our study that we are doing at the Christmas season. There's a young moms group that's forming in our church, and so they're starting a study. If you know of a young mom that's looking for a church, it's a wonderful way to connect, is to begin in a smaller setting with other moms that are facing some of the same kinds of things they're going to be meeting, you'll notice in our bulletin on Sunday evening. So uh, um, that's a copy of the book. They can get it from their own source or pick one up from us if they want. 
Other announcements that we have to hold up. Anything else for the good of the cause today? I have one more announcement. I want you to meet my uh, exchange son, Oliver Jansen, who's with me this week. This is Oliver. He's from Germany. He was uh, uh, our son 10 years ago in our household, and uh, Oliver's been to visit us now several times, and he knows he has an American home whenever he wants one, and it's a treat for us. Uh, Oliver will head back to Germany today. Yet today he'll be in London, and then later on... Uh, couple other places before he ends up back in Germany so it's been a treat to have him it's been um, not the same kind of time we normally have because Gail has been sick the entire time so we got to get him back again when Gail's feeling better or as Oliver keeps saying we need to go to Germany to see him there so <laughs> Oliver is now finished with his college studies he uh, studied uh, uh, aviation administration and uh, He's looking forward to a career in that field in the years ahead, so uh, welcome him after the service, if you would. And, and I, I said to Oliver, I said, which service would you like to go to? And he said, both. So uh, he'll be here for both services, so I, I get to show him off both times. Take a moment and greet your friends and neighbors, and I'll call you back together in a minute. <laughs> I get another hug from you. You betcha. <laughs> now, where's Kate going? She Good was, morning. She was lady. Hi. She just, oh, she's way in the back row. You know it. I have to go find my wife. <laughs> Good yeah. morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> I mean, could I be you? Good. Good morning. I was going to say, where in the heck are you? I'm, You're in the way of the people. Good, Good morning. Good morning. You can take your coat off. It's not snowing in here. <laughs> Look, at just a minute ago, you couldn't see out that window. Hey, how are you? Good. Good. Ha, I got mine first. <laughs> oh, well. Sit down. Oh, that's right. Oh, it is good to be here. As we look out the back window, we see those blowing snow things coming off the roof. But I, I know that if you're traveling today, uh, you want to see less snow. Um, today, as we say, is baptism of our Lord. As you entered, you may have seen the shells at the entryways to the sanctuary. Um, you notice that there's lots of them there. When you leave, feel free to take one with you as a reminder. You may have already grabbed a shell, and that's great. Um, again, as we gather, we're reminded it's an ancient symbol, the shell, of uh, our baptism. Uh, later on in our service today, we will be going through a, a remembering or reaffirmation of our baptism. It won't be required of anyone in the room, but everyone is welcome if you like to come forward. As you'll hear then, there may be somebody here who has never been baptized and would choose to be baptized today. Um, often there is someone in the group, and we will do that as well. So when the time comes, I'll instruct how that will happen. But, but welcome to this day. Today we remember the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today we remember our own baptism, and we are thankful. When we were reluctant to even dip our toes into faith's raging river, Jesus comes, teaching us how to swim. When we're hesitant to cup our hands and drink from the well that never runs dry, Jesus comes, reaching in, splashing our faces with joy. When we're unwilling to be the channel of hope in the world, Jesus comes, shaping us into vessels carrying living water to all the world. Come, Jesus, come. Bring your baptism waters of change and transformation into our parks' lives. Amen. Amen.
Please join me in the opening prayer. God of mercy and truth, through the waters of baptism, you have made us your own. From the wandering wilderness of our lives, you have led us to the river's edge. Yet, we are so thirsty. We confess that we're dazzled by the things of this world, and we seek to satisfy our deepest needs with the shallowest of solutions. Help us to make a fresh beginning, to drink deep from your living waters that never run dry. Amen. Young friends to come forward. We don't have a lot of young friends here today, and I'm looking for our box. Might as well run up there. No. <laughs> and I'm not seeing our box, so I'm going to do something else. You guys grab a seat, and I'm going to go right back here for a second and grab something at the door. I'm not getting away from you guys. I'm coming back, really honest. This is really a small group, but when we look out into the sanctuary, we see a small group of adults as well. Okay, you guys. You know what this is probably, don't you? Okay, what do I have here? I, I have seashells, and I have one big shell. I, this is one of the shells that I was able to find um, last uh, spring when I was in California. And I, I didn't find it on the beach. I found it in an antique store. Um, that's <laughs> the way I find shells sometimes. I do find small ones out on the beach. Some of the shells that are at the doors are shells I picked up along the beach in, in Florida over the years. And uh, this shell, this particular shape particularly, has been the shape that has symbolized baptism for hundreds and hundreds of years. Do you, do you ha have any idea why that might be a shell would symbolize baptism? Well, any guesses? No ideas? Oh, okay, it kind of looks like it has feet. That could be a reason, but it's not the right one. But usually we come up with something. What do you think? What might be a reason a shell would symbolize baptism? Because, what's that? Yeah, yeah, that would be close, yeah, because it comes from water. And water is, of course, um, a part of baptism. We know that because we've been through baptism together, haven't we? Yeah. And so the waters of baptism are then not something that are just kind of like we understand them right off either. Water is a symbol of, what do you use water for at home? Do you have reasons you use it? Yeah? Drinking, it, it keeps us alive, doesn't it? What else? It cleanses us. That's right. Anything else it can do? What happens if, if you get too much water and you land in the middle of a lake or a river and you can't swim? Yeah, then you drown. Yeah, yeah waters of baptism are a reminder of us dying to our own desires and the things that aren't helpful to us in our lives. And it's also a symbol of being born. As we know, when a baby is born, there's lots of water involved. And so it's a symbol also of life and birth. And baptism is a time when we talk about passing through the waters of death and new life. So there's all kinds of symbols that are present here for us. The shell being a great starting point for us today. And so I want you guys, have you taken a shell yet today? You can take one if you'd like. You want to be careful which one, and you guys too. I'll hold them right here, and you guys figure out which one you want. There's a lot of cool ones. And later on, if you don't get quite the right one, you can go and trade it out for a different one, okay? You guys can do that too. You're allowed to trade. All right, sometimes when you come up for the waters of baptism that we're going to use later as we reaffirm our baptism, often I have shells in the water. Today there are no shells in the water. The shells are at the door, so that's the place where we'll pick them up. Let's have a prayer together, okay? Lord, help us as we open ourselves today to our understanding of what baptism is about, that we will recognize that even in our learning and understanding, it's always a beginning, a new place to start. And it's, 
It's never fully completed. That Our understanding grows with time, and we thank you for that. Now watch over us. That uh, these, these girls that are up here right now, um, they're so amazing, and they're so talented, gifted, and able. And sometimes we demean the younger ones, and we think they just don't get it. But these guys are pretty sharp, and we are grateful for them in our midst. Continue, Lord, to inspire us through them. In your name we pray. In the name of your Son, the one who taught us all to pray, we pray. Our Father, who art who in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will, will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us, us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver, deliver us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom and the and power and the, and the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. It's a time for us to pray together. And so I ask, what are the prayers that we hold up today? Who are we thinking about today? Mark, it's good to see you out and about. You've been pretty sick, haven't you? Well, I'm glad to see you getting around. Others that we hold up, yes. Uh, Julie Flicker, who was in church with us and helped us. Let's keep
keep Jerry in our prayers as he's going through some recovery and he's doing better. He looked um, better this, as he's gone further through his time and treatment, so let's keep him in our thoughts. Who else do we hold up? Anybody else? Jack Barron's following some surgery. Let's keep Jack in our thoughts. Yes. Let's keep Bev in our prayers as, uh, as tests are happening this week. Let's remember her. Anybody else we're thinking about that we hold up? Yes. Dan Holcomb and all the those that serve in the military and are in harm's way. Who else? Any? Yes. I haven't this week. Um, he's you know making a recovery from the removal of his shoulder. Um, they had to put in you know a an implant about a year ago, a replacement of his shoulder uh, mechanism, and that was infected, so it had to be removed. And so now he'll go for a period of time healing without any kind of a shoulder. That's correct, and so the hope will be that it will heal. I don't know, does anybody have recent news? Yes. I just took a note from Dr. Thursday, and he's got stitches on it, so that'll give him hope for him to go into his work. Great, great. That's good news. Thank you, Dick, for sharing. So he is making good progress. Stitches are out from his surgery. He'll have to now heal, and the infection clear up completely before they'll consider what to do next. So... Um, it's a difficult spot for him to be in, so let's keep him in our prayers. Thank you. Who, who else are we thinking about? Yes. Uh, yes. Yes, for your mother that she's been traveling, she's down south and she's got a terrible infection, and so let's keep her in our thoughts and prayers. And everybody else that's been facing crud as I've heard it referred to and there's other things too so um, let's keep folks in our prayers as they're dealing with this yuckiness yes Mark yeah Gail too it's been a hard time and she's been uh, 102 degrees most of the week um, with headaches and so she's been off work and her patients that they want you know they have to recall them and reschedule but she's scheduled two months out book solid right now so where do you reschedule patients? It's very hard. So she's been, felt awful about them and not being able to be there. You can't go with a fever and help people, or you might get them exposed to something new. So uh, let's uh, keep all our people that are facing these kind of things, because lots of folks worry about work. or You know, there are people that worry about losing their jobs as they face illness, and those, those are the folks that you just worry about so much. So let's keep them in our thoughts, too. Who else are we thinking about? Yes. Great. Let's uh, keep Isaiah in our prayers as he's seeking a church. Yes. Oh, my. A granddaughter facing breast cancer surgery. And from that, I can tell she's a young person, and that's, you know, a very hard thing, news to get, and let's keep her in our thoughts. Thank you, Artie. Who else do we pray for today? I have a friend that I, I thought might be here today. He said, oh, I'm going to come to church. I, I'm going to be there another time. And, you know, I, I just am gentle, and I'm trying to find how you, you know, you woo somebody to church. Because you can't, you can't make them or force them, or twisting arms isn't helpful, is it? And so I'm praying for this friend of mine that, that um, as he does come, you guys will love him up so completely that his experience of what happens here, I have no illusions that this will be a church he'll choose long term. Um, but I, I, I have a hope, and I just have such respect for this man. So you know, you'll never know who it is. So love everybody up, okay? <laughs> love them all. Who else do we pray for today? Anybody else that we're holding up, that we're thinking about? You know, there's, there's awful things happening, you know, not terribly far do we have to turn to find 
some tragedies in our world. And, and uh, as we hear about things happening uh, in, in North Korea or we hear about things happening in other war-torn regions of our world, we, our heart goes out to regular people, you know, that are victims of ruthless people that for one reason or another are acting in terrible ways. Let's keep those people in our prayers. Did I see another hand? Yes. Keep Vicky in our prayers. Thank you for sharing. Lots of tests and lots of unknowns in our lives, aren't there? Let's, let's pray about that. Anything else? We're going to have a new prayer song today, I think, right? Tell us about it, Kevin. I think you all know it. It's Lamb of God. We are too in celebration. <laughs> Your only Son, no sin to hide, but you have sent Him from your side to walk upon this guilty side and to become the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, God, I love the holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Precious Lord, wash us in your precious blood. Help us to remember that you, you are the one who does save us. That you call us to something more than we would choose for ourselves. And you, you go into the world with us, Lord, as we come to this place, help us to re group and to gather our hearts and our minds that we might be sent on an important mission in the world. Baptize us with your spirit here and now. Transform and change us in the renewing of our minds. We have held up so many prayers today, Lord, and yet we know that more prayers exist in our hearts, prayers that we dare not share, and prayers that are private to ourselves, Lord. Hear all of our prayers. Hear the prayers that we have for one another, the prayers that we hold up for your churches in, in our neighborhood here and throughout our community and beyond. Lord, we pray for churches that do church very different than we do. We pray for those who are very like ourselves. Lord, we know that the instruments of a concert are very different, and yet together playing as they are conducted by the great master conductor is creates a beautiful, beautiful sound. Now, Lord, with all of us paying close attention to your directing of our lives individually and together, that your church might bring peace on earth, might share love and grace far and near. And Lord, today as we talk about something as personal and as, as corporate as baptism, that we might go from this place with a greater sense of who we are and whose we are. Touch our hearts for these prayers we hold up in your name. Amen.
The scripture today is from the book of Luke, chapter 3, 15 through 17, and 21 through 22. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire, his willowing fork in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat from his granary. But the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from the heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. God's words for God's people. Thanks be to God. On this second Sunday of 2016, the Sunday that we know of as Baptism of Our Lord Sunday, our lesson from the Gospels focuses our attention on the place of baptism in our lives. Baptism has always been at the heart of the Christian faith. It's a sign and a symbol that we belong to God. It's a sign of purification and and adoption and as we shared with the kids, even a symbol of death. It's a point of entry into the church family known as membership. It's what the church has called a sacrament, a means of grace, a holy commitment, or a holy moment. Perhaps today we can consider some aspects of what baptism is can say to us and can say to the world. First of all, baptism says that it's God who has saved us. Certainly it's, it's not the water itself. Water is but a symbol of something beyond itself. The story is told of an old mountain preacher who was baptizing converts at a revival meeting and when up stepped a burly old guy who said he wanted to be baptized as well. So the preacher led him off into the water, and as he did, another man who was watching quietly remarked, Preacher, now I don't want to interfere in your business, but you need to know that this is no ordinary sinner that you've got a hold of. And that one dip surely won't be enough. I'd say you ought to anchor him out in deep water overnight. I think maybe the objector was right. If our hope for cleansing is based on the efforts of the water, there's going to have to be a whole lot more water for me and I suspect for many of us here. We know that it's not the water that saves us. Water is simply a symbol of something greater. It has no soul-saving power itself. And to be frank, contrary to the long and strong strain of Christian thinking, neither does the sturdiness of our belief. The focus in baptism isn't on the believer. However much we want to make it that way, but the focus is on God. Grace isn't something we earn by the goodness of our lives or the correctness of our beliefs, but something we receive as a free gift. Baptism is intended to symbolize this. Yes, there is a connected turning that we often refer to in the midst of our lives, a new direction, a new choice, something better for ourselves, a healthier path that sometimes associates itself with our baptism. But the more I, the older I get, then the more I watch the church and all of us in the midst of our actions of faith, I'm reminded even in our repentance we fall far short 
of what our souls really need. Have you noticed that too? Take, for example, the powerful story of the prodigal son. In the parable, the wayward son turns, remember? And in the original, we can see basic words that really the word repent even comes from, to turn. He sees something of his failings and he decides to go home. However, even then, he misunderstands the full extent of his father's love. And he misunderstands the true identity that he has as a child of God. So he goes home with this intention of living his life as a servant in his father's house, far below the glory of what his father intended for him to be. But it was the very best he could do. I've sinned against heaven, he said, and I've sinned against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father... He does what the son cannot do for himself. He says, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put the rings on his finger and the sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf and kill it. For let's have a feast and celebrate for this son of mine who was dead is alive again. He was lost. He's now found. It is so tempting for us to think that we're the agents of our own salvation, somehow by finally getting our lives right and headed in the right direction. But even in our best moments, when we turn away from our failings, we still have profound shortcomings. Let us make no mistake about this. Although much of the Christian church would say otherwise. And our our humility would serve us well as we realize that that we're imperfect, all of us, before, during, and after our baptisms. There's a lot of theology out there that would like to believe in a clean kind of sort of way and and make everything kind of lay out just right, that that before our baptisms were were just completely soiled and nothing's good about us, and, and after our baptism it's all cleaned up and all is well and good and we're all in and it's all been fixed. The reality is, is it's all been fixed before we even do anything. God loves us that much. The good news is God does accept us anyway. God meets us where we are. And the prodigal story reminds us that while he was still a long way off, God saw him, and God didn't just go to him or wait for him to come. God hurried, ran at a distance meet the Son. So the salvation we celebrate in baptism isn't a victory of our own will, but a victory of our loving God. God so loves us that our human antics don't dissuade or repulse God. That's why we always come to baptism as an act of of total humility. Baptism is a symbol of God's grace freely given. In Vienna, Austria, Oliver, you might like this, there's a church in which the Habsburgs, the former ruling family of Austria, are buried generation upon generation. It's said that when there were royal funerals, the the funeral procession would finally arrive at the church for the burial rites, and the mourners leading the funeral procession would, would knock on the the giant doors, the entrance to the the church. Who is it that desires admission here? A priest from the inside would ask through the locked door. His apostolic majesty, the emperor, replied the guard. The response would come, I don't know him. So there would be a second knock followed by a similar question that would be asked. And this time the funeral guard would would announce the deceased as the high emperor. Again, I don't know him. And the sounds would echo through the burial chamber under the cathedral. Finally, there would be a third knock. Who is it? A poor sinner, your brother would come the reply. And then, and only then, the doors would open. 
and the royal burial would be completed. I think that's the proper attitude for baptism. As we refer to it as a death to self, a death to our past, and a, and a rebirth into our future. Total and complete humility and understanding which places us not as entitled or above others, but as sisters and brothers, even to those with whom we disagree. For in God's sight, we're all a part of the same family. So it's not the water that saves us. And it's not our own noble intentions that save us. It's God acting out of a total and complete self-giving love. That's the first thing for us to see this morning. It is God who saves us. God is the big shaker and mover when it comes to baptismal waters. Here is the second thing to say today. It is God who calls us. As we've stated, baptism is a free gift from God, but the purpose of baptism is to give us a new identity. William P. Barker tells about a, a machinist with the Ford Motor Company in Detroit. And I've not shared this before, but my great-grandfather worked for Henry Ford. He was the chief uh, engineer on a vehicle that would eventually become a Ford. It was a, a Lincoln before it was a Ford. He was the engineer that designed the engine in the Lincoln, my great-grandfather. And the Ford Motor Company was a, a pretty big operation, as you all know. One of the things that would happen in a big company like that is people would, would believe it or not, borrow tools and take them home and borrow parts and other things and take them home. And the company um, was aware of this, though they did very little to stop it. Uh, it was more or less accepted by management. And so what could you do? The machinist that was working during that period of time, long ago when Ford was still the head of the company, he'd had some type of a, a religious experience and received baptism, and he himself became this one machinist, a devout believer, even though he'd taken home a lot of tools. Even more importantly, in the midst of his conversion, he he took what happened to him very seriously. The very, the very next morning, he arrived at work loaded down with all this stuff, tools, and parts, all these things that he'd taken from the company over many years. He explained the situation to his foreman, and he added that he'd never really meant to steal them, and he was hope, hopeful that he could be forgiven. The foreman was so astonished and so impressed by this this man's action that he cabled Mr. Ford himself, who was visiting one of the European plants, and, and he explained the entire event in detail. Immediately, Ford cabled back these words, Dam up the Detroit River and baptize the entire city. <laughs> I think he, he was thinking he'd get a whole lot of stuff back if they did. You know, baptism... At its best, it works to open our eyes to our true identity, who we're intended to be, who God created us to be, and as we begin to realize who, who we are as children of God, we stand a better chance of living our lives more closely aligned with all that being followers of Jesus Christ really means. About 20 years ago, the Wall Street Journal carried an article concerning the dramatic increase of Islamic fundamentalism in Turkey. Imagine that 20 years ago. We talk about it a lot today. Turkey was a country that had, in much of its history, been rather secular, not a religious state. And so this is a quote that comes from that story of 20, actually 22 years ago, um, from a young uh, Muslim Turk. Here's what he said. Our view of religion is different from yours. He said to a Western visitor, according to your rules, he continued, religion counts only in the places where you pray. Our religion is a way of life. I have no time at all, not one minute without Islam. Do you suppose that's how the world views us? 
the Christian faith, do our rules apply for us only while we're in church? Sadly, I'm afraid to say that this has all too often characterized our actual practice of faith. One would be hard-pressed sometimes to know without asking whether we're people of faith or not. I wonder where we've missed it. Why don't we understand that baptism means the beginning of a new life? To, to paraphrase maybe that, that young Muslim, we have no time at all, not one minute without God. Pastor Martin Hellriegel once returned to Germany where he was born. It was also to the city where he was raised and to the church where he was baptized. And he went to the town there and he went into the sanctuary and there was the baptismal font. And there he stood over that font and he reflected deeply. There were thoughts of gratitude for all that he had received from his parents, from his church, and from God. His thoughts were thoughts of renewal and rededication to his calling as a disciple, a Christian, indeed a follower of Jesus Christ. He reflected that it began in his baptism, in a sense, right there at that font. Commitments were made on his behalf, which he would later claim in his confirmation himself. He would claim them. The church, it was an ancient church. Generations had come before him, and they had received the same gift he was embracing as he stood under the, that vaulted ceiling. In the light of this realization, he wondered how could he be faithless to his calling in his moment, in his time. So many had given so much. I wonder how many of us walk away from the baptismal font here or other places and we do little to nothing with God's calling in our lives. Sometimes it may be hard to imagine, but, but God is calling each of us to walk in Jesus' footsteps. Baptism signifies that it is God who saves us, and baptism signifies that it is God who calls us, but finally baptism reminds us that it is also God who goes with us. We, we don't go alone into the world. Just as we don't come to baptism trusting in our own merits, but in God's gracious love for us. Baptism is also a reminder that we're not alone. As Jesus heard those words at his baptism, you are my beloved son. With you, I, I am well pleased. So we too hear God's voice into our lives to tell us that we're loved. That we're a child of God, which means we are not alone. God is with us. And as Jesus reminded his disciples, even to the very ends of the age. Everyone in the small town called her Grandma Richardson. Late one afternoon, Grandma Richardson looked out her window to see a group of men on her porch. It was an all-too-familiar sight in that coal town. She knew what had happened before they even told her. Her husband had been killed in a mining accident. The years they passed slowly after that day and with great difficulty. Grandma Richardson was admired by everyone in the town for her courage and her unwavering faith. And she and her children, they, they attended church almost every week. And she lived her faith in so many other ways. And then there was another 
knock on her door. Her, her oldest son also had been killed in a mining accident. Grandma, she grew older and weaker in the spring and summer when the weather was warm. She would sit on her front porch in her rocking chair, slowly rocking and softly singing the hymns of faith that she had memorized as a child were still with her. Children would, would gather and they would listen and they would sing along and she would tell Bible stories. And then, believe it, believe it or not, it, it happened again. Another son was killed in the mines. And, and after the funeral, Grandma Richardson was again sitting on her porch in her favorite chair singing when, when one of the children gathered around her said, Grandma, Grandma, aren't you, aren't you sad today? Yes, she replied. I am sad, very, very sad. It's, it is hard to say goodbye to someone you love, and I've had to do it three times now. But, she went on, I, I have something more than sadness inside of me. And then to those children gathered around here, she spoke of her faith. And one of the little kids, looking up at her, said, Grandma, can you give us some of that faith? Why, children? Grandma Richardson answered, I've been giving it to you for years now. It's knowing that God loves you and that I love you and that, that God has made one promise that is a gift and it's the most valuable gift of, in all of the world. God promised that no matter what happens, no matter how good or bad things may be, regardless of your joy, regardless of your sorrow, God will not leave you alone. That is God's promise to us. All of us. Even in those times when we just don't think God is there and in our lives we wander off in some corner of the world away from where we think God would go, God goes with us. Always. And that is God's promise. It's part and parcel of our baptism to understand that baptism symbolizes our beginning as new persons, that baptism reminds us that God is the one who saves us, that baptism symbolizes it's God who has called us into a new life of grace-filled service and love in the world, and that our baptism symbolizes that it's God who always goes with us. What good news that is. We are God's beloved children. And with us, believe it or not, God is well pleased. Spread that word beyond these walls, will you? With me and for me, but more so for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our ushers come and collect our offerings for this day.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy. Please be seated. Today as we gather in this place, we, we have the opportunity to receive a reminder of our baptism. Those that would desire to come forward and, and receive that reminder are welcome to come. Those who have not been baptized but would like to be baptized, just gather in the front here and, and Kevin will greet you and we'll go from there. And there may be no one today that would like to receive baptism. Come as you would like. Those who would like to remember their baptism, please come at this time. Mark, remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. Remember your baptism, Kevin, and be thankful. Diane, remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Dick, remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful, Rob. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. Remember your baptism, Judy, and be thankful. Remember your baptism, Marilyn, and be thankful. Amen. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. 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 Remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. Remember your baptism and be thankful, Julie. Amen. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. Remember your baptism. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen, Deb. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. Dawn, remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. Would you do me, please? Thanks be to God. Amen. Will you stand and close our service today with warning cry? you 
And indeed, God is there. Thanks be to God. Go in peace. Amen.